human rights right now, right? And uh, so not all <laughs> immigration stories have been great uh, coming to the United States. Uh, we do have a history of immigration as being a, a very strong part of what is America. America, <laughs> uh, yes, was always inhabited for last maybe 30,000 years. Um, but then the new world was discovered or encountered or invaded, however you want to say it. So now we, we're, we're descendants of what has always been, right? And so there's reality. So this is the Middle Passage, if you don't know that story, it is a story of the slavery, um, which is another story of immigration. And so I just want to always remember when we start things to always think about indigenous and traditional uh, uh, land claims that we have here always. Then also the horrific history that the United States has had um, or the people that have created America that have now become the United States. And so now we're in a new whole thing, what, it last 200 some years, right, of this, this continent's history, Northern uh, America. Um, we've had immigration. We've had uh, the exclusion acts of the last century, just before the turn of the last century from China. Um, so that, I know we know a lot of this history. I just wanted to make sure we as free press community uh, entered into this conversation tonight with that understanding that it's a large discussion and we're only gonna to touch moments of it. Um, we're also, because it's May 1st or was May 1st last week, we wanted to talk a little bit about workers' rights and the two are intermingled in everything we do. Everything we do, work, why do people come here? Because they wanna work. Why do they come here? Because they want a better way of life. And that's why our ancestors did and folks that are indigenous still do. They still come to work and to be part of what is now. Um, so we have some good guests tonight, some great friends of the free press. We've tried to cover their stories throughout the time. Um, Edith, uh, she'll speak for herself and Carrie is gonna help uh, in that conversation if, if uh, language becomes an issue um, about some of the struggles she's gone through, uh, not only <laughs> while she's been in Columbus, but now, you know, and then, then, then those last three, three point some years being at the Mennonite church and then now what's going to go forward you know we're not we're not done with this story Edith we're not done with this story it's it continues Lynn is with the Ohio Immigrant Alliance um I hope she's coming on she has some other updates of some other immigration stories that are going on particularly there's a um a uh, Guatemalan person and and Tim, I think we have someone that's going to speak about that. Tim Chavez, a uh, uh, Guatemalan woman that's uh, being detained down in the Butler County uh, uh, under some some strange conditions. She's been allowed to go, but for some reason the local. And then Andrew Lynn is with Socialist Alternative, and he he's been working a lot with the Amazon uh, organizing. So not to jump too much, but. When you start thinking about it, uh, the Amazon organization does have a lot of immigrant and black workers. And um, so the stories continue, you know, immigration and worker rights. So we just need to continue to understand those relationships. So um, let's see, I don't know if I can move that forward, Andrew. How do I move that forward? Let's see. Do I do that? I might have to stop sharing and then do it again. Sorry. There you go with the technology. I did want to say, um, 
to everybody that is and should be and it is. Happy Mother's Day uh, to everybody. And this is the weekend of Mother's Day. So know that. Um, there's some history we need to always can talk about um, relationship with women, uh, immigrants, all the, the, the rights. Uh, so this is a great picture I thought that depicted some of the struggle the, the women fight shoulder to shoulder with the men. Uh, this was uh, down in the mines, um, no craft division. And so, you know, they always want to divide us. They've, the working class has always uh, been, they've been trying to approach div division all the time. Uh, Columbia going on right now, general strike. This is from today or maybe last yesterday, but um, from right now, general strike in Bogota and all across the country. Um, people are getting killed, uh, fighting against uh, what began as a uh, cut in um, pension funds and then it became larger because people of color were getting hit and cut and killed uh, particularly. So BLM, sounds of BLM. Uh, CWA, uh, unions are about organizing and, and CWA was able to stop the $47 million bonus that this, this CEO of GE was trying to do at the same time that people were losing jobs. So, you know, unions are trying to do a lot of different things. Workers are out there, justice issues. Um, here, this is, um, no, that's not what I wanted to do, shoot. <laughs> uh, stop, let's see. All right, so this, is Cortez. If we start talking about the beginning of the Americas, the Northern part of America, Cortez plays a lot into it. And that's, uh, a lot of folks have come here for many different reasons. Cortez came purely to plunder and to, to claim as much wealth and, and treasure as he could for, for the empire, right? Immigration has changed that reality. Um, but I wanted to play a little bit. This is, this is uh, Bomax, Dr. Bomax. That's called rebellion. There's always been rebellion, the whole thing. So, that's enough. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying to do this, jumping around a little bit. We'll do that a little bit later. So Andrew, um, you're, you're available to speak now. You're okay. So we're, uh, we wanted to sort of catch up ourselves a little bit with the current organizing struggle as well that was going on and some other issues that uh, Andrew's been in. He's, he's been involved with so much uh, currently, um, particularly with police brutality, uh, strikes uh, and, and actions. He's been helping them mainly today, we wanted to have him bring, uh, brought in because he's been one of the few folks in Columbus that have really organized around the Amazon uh, organizing effort. So Andrew, please uh, go for a little bit and we'll uh, move on as that. And, and please, we're gonna probably have a little discussion afterwards. And maybe if you have some questions, Steve, you and I'll try to see if some hands raise up, but let's give some respect to Andrew, get done with things and then we'll uh, have a talk. Thanks, and should I keep it to like, by this tennis yeah minutes? yeah 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 you know get get things out and yeah okay yeah I probably and, went too long myself my bad so first let me apologize that i'm in my car i and also i usually am working off like something that is like more pre-written but I, i'm just looking at notes right now so um if my words are a bit jumbled uh apologies in advance but um i mean i think when it comes to a lot of the recent events that we've seen um regarding like race and immigration. Obviously, as Mark said, there's a ton of overlap and the, the Amazon struggle uh, is included in that. 
Um, before I get into that, though, I, I just want to point out, like, you know, May 1st happened recently, International Workers' Day, and that also was the struggle of immigrants, um, of German immigrant workers. Um, and that day has been used by, uh, you know, Im immigration activists uh, since then, um, you know, as a historically significant date to, to wage struggles and protests and things like that. Um, and also just, you know, speaking as an Asian American, I also wanted to quickly touch on like the Stop Asian Hate movement that emerged earlier this year um, and how there's history there with anti-immigrant, you know, rhetoric with uh, at least the thing that I think about is, uh, you know, immigrant Chinese labor and how um, they were exploited and used in order to um, further exploit white workers and Irish workers and things like that. Um, but yeah, so, so getting back to the Amazon struggle, um, obviously, I mean, I think many of us here are probably somewhat aware that like Amazon is a pretty exploitative place to work. Um, there, there are stories about, um, you know, whether at Amazon or Whole Foods, there's stories about workers being like really highly monitored so that they're as efficient as possible. Um, stories about Whole Foods workers like being penalized or even fired for just like shelving things a little bit off, um, as well as like pregnant mothers who have had to uh, pee into bottles during shifts because, you know, they weren't allowed an adequate time to have even a, a simple bathroom break. Um, and so, you know, a few months back, um, there was a historic campaign in, in Besamere, Alabama, um, also near Birmingham, where there was really, you know, historic struggles uh, where Martin Luther King, um, you know, was beginning to, to uh, start the Poor People's Campaign. Um, so there's a lot of history there. And one of the central focuses of this union drive was, all, was, was not just the horrible working conditions, um, but also race. And, you know, the, the overlap between race and immigration and xenophobia, um, I, I think is something significant to keep in mind, especially, you know, as we've come out of the Trump era where those things were, were played up even more heavily. Um, but yeah, just to give people some background, like the workplace, uh, or the workforce in Besamere, 86% um, of the workers at Amazon warehouses uh, were black and or women. Um, and so dealing with racism and sexism on the job was, was a major central issue. Um, unfortunately, the union drive as heroic as it was, um, it, it ultimately ended up failing and um, workers voted against the union. Um, but, but I think we should not take this as a sign that you know, workers don't want to be organized or that there isn't potential for future efforts to organize Amazon workplaces. Um, one thing we have to keep in mind is that Amazon basically cheated and, and you know, basically completely cheated um, in this union vote. Um, some of the things they did were, you know, they forced workers to attend um, mandatory meetings where they, they told them anti-union rhetoric. Um, at one point, they actually, like, uh, de facto bribed city officials to change a stoplight at the intersection leading into the workplace um, because organizers were able to use that stoplight to talk with workers who were leaving and, and coming in and out of work. Um, they also even set up an, like, an illegal mailbox and had signs lying about when the voting deadline was so that um, workers would vote early against the union before the campaign actually had a chance um, to, to raise their issues and, and to raise their points. Um, that being said, I mean, I think there are also important lessons for us to, to learn from this. Um, again, the union drive was really heroic, but uh, some of the potential issues that, you know, that, that some of our socialist alternative members saw, like we, we have uh, members in our national organization who are down there um, really helping to organize and build this sort of solidarity across the nation, which I'll talk about in a bit. But I think, um, you know, it's, it's important that they tried to organize at Amazon, but there maybe was too much of a reliance on like a flashy media strategy to, to, to gain popularity for the union. Um, and um, yeah, I, I think one of the lessons we can draw from this is that you have to ultimately organize, you know, do the work of organizing workers um, and, and not just rely on like media. Um, for example, yeah, there were some other issues that we can learn from, for example, the union um, tried to uh, tried to assuage some of the fears around paying dues by basically saying like, 
you know, you don't have to pay dues for the union because we live in a right to work state. Um, but that kind of played into the hands of Amazon where they said, well, if you don't have to pay dues anyway, then what's the point of a union? Um, also, I think there could have been more economic demands put forward. So uh, it, it was a really, really good and important thing that they actually linked Black Lives Matter to the union campaign. Um, but there was still sort of a lack of demands like um, you know, better wages or, or workplace rights and things like that, um, which might have resonated more with workers. Um, and also, even though it was good that they used the slogan of Black Lives Matter for the struggle, um, there was kind of a lack of a clear plan of what concretely that meant um, and, and how that related to some of the larger protests around Black Lives Matter that were emerging. Um, so, I mean, all that being said, I mean, again, this was a really historic uni uh, unionization effort. And even though it's unfortunate that the union lost, um, you know, the, the fight to organize Amazon workers is spreading. Um, currently, there are Teamsters in Iowa um, that, uh, Teamsters in Iowa that are, you know, hoping to organize Amazon workers. Um, although right now it seems like there's more of a longer term plan. And I think if there had been a victory in Besamir, um, we might see the Teamsters in Iowa actually ramping up their efforts to unionize uh, Amazon and coming out in full force. Um, but during the, the um, unionization campaign, yes, uh, Columbus Socialist Alternative, along with other socialist alternative branches and other organizations, um, took place in uh, solidarity actions, um, where basically, you know, we rallied outside of various Amazon hub lockers or related, um, related key areas. Um, in order to show and, and build this sort of national solidarity for the campaign um, and to show that, you know, this is not just about fighting for one isolated workplace, but that this is a whole larger movement. Um, and I guess just to continue off of that really quick, I mean, um, I don't want to take up too much time, but kind of related to that are, are these efforts to tax Amazon and other large corporations that are happening in cities like Seattle and now uh, Los Angeles. Um, so. Socialist Alternative has a city councilor named Shama Sawant, who's out in Seattle, um, who just for people who don't know, um, she's an independent socialist and um, you know, ran with zero corporate donations and she actually donates two thirds of her wage so that she lives off an average worker's wage. Um, and, and she helped build and uh, lead a movement to tax Amazon and they want a $240 million tax on big corporations like Amazon um, in order to fund affordable housing. Um, and this has since spread to places like Los Angeles. Um, so I, I think that also provides some context for this larger fight against Amazon and how, you know, there's a need to link these workplace struggles to broader struggles, um, whether that is the struggle for things like affordable housing um, or, or green jobs, um, or as in the case of Besmir, the struggle for Black Lives Matter, because, um, you know, as, as many of us probably know, uh, one of the popular demands of the Black Lives Matter movement is to cut the funding to police by at least half and um, transfer those funds to things like housing, jobs, and education, um, because those would, you know, do far more to make our community safer um, than than increasing a, a budget to militarize the police. Um, so yeah, I, I guess just to wrap up, um, you know, the the effort to unionize Amazon and Besmir, unfortunately, it ultimately failed. But the good thing that to take away from this is that there are really important lessons to draw from this. Um, and, you know, the struggle to continue organizing Amazon workplaces, um, you know, it, it's ongoing and, and these struggles will learn from these lessons. Um, but also even more significantly, the step that the workers in Vesmir took to link this to other struggles it is a really important step for the Black Lives Matter movement and also the labor movement, um, showing how when we take these different struggles and unite them together, you know, we become even more powerful. Um, so I'll, I'll wrap up there in the sake of time. So. Thanks, Andrew. Um, we'll, we'll speak more about that as, as we go. Um, yeah, the ongoing struggle, ongoing battles to organize workers. I mean, USPS workers that have been organized forever, the United Postal Workers constantly under battle and under stress uh, because of an arcane pension system. And so I think the, 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 the message continues to ring out that 
our economy, our economic system, our economy that is based on uh, a two-legged stool is going to fall at some point. And until people that are workers, we're all workers. Everybody's in a working class, uh, unless you're paying somebody for to work. You're in a working class. It, we need to be about solidarity and working together. So now let's, um, I see uh, Edith, uh, AKA Manuel <laughs> um, is on and Carrie are, is on. So uh, maybe we can hear from them, but just let, let them warm up a little bit, but I wanted to hear play this one song real quick. So let me play this one song real quick. Here. And then Edith, when you're ready to go, we will go. That's a great out there too. <laughs> All right. So you all ready to sing with us as well? We just sang that up, but I need you to, if you're able to stand up for this one, Woo! a little more a quicker. <laughs> we know that music is something that grounds us in these movements, and we know it teaches us a history, as Jacob has taught us here tonight. And this song calls upon, it's uh, within the tradition, it's uh, taking that anthem and bringing it up to date and some folks in a newer generation rewrote those words uh, and called out some of the freedom fighters uh, that have led the way, have paved our way that we stand on their shoulders and continue to teach us in these struggles. And so it's, which side are you on? And at the part where we say, which side are you on? You're gonna say, does anyone know? We're on the freedom side, okay? So we'll teach it here. It goes like this. <laughs> Which side are you on, my people? Which side are you on? We're on the freedom side. Which side are you on, my people? Which side are you on? We're on the Ella side. Baker was a freedom fighter. She taught us how to fight. Now we're going to fight all day and night until we get it right. Which side are you on? Just wanted to share that a little bit. Which side are you on? So um, we now honored to have uh, Edith Espinal and, and Carrie uh, Vedre. Vedre? I, you're gonna have to pronounce that for me. I, I haven't heard it, so I'm, I'm sorry. Um, to speak on some 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 issues that uh, are close to her heart, Edith, please share with us as you wish. Hi everyone, this is Edith Espinal. Sorry for being in my car, but I have something to. Um, it's a it's a common it's a common theme tonight. <laughs> on a theme uh, similar. <laughs> Andrew, okay. e e Yeah, like you guys remember, I stayed in San Party in the Columbus Mennonite Church for uh, 40 months. And finally, in February 18, I left the San Party. Um, ICE led me to left the San Party with uh, supervision. And I need to go to the ICE office every four months. I still have my um, deportation order. And I still have the fine spending. Um, 
I don't know if you remember 2019, the um, Trump administration decided to put a fine for uh, people in, living in sanctuary. And three weeks ago, um, the per Department of Homeland Security decided to don't charge any more the fines with people, but I asked him to my lawyer to send it to Mallorca's. Um, they don't plan to charge me anymore for the fine. So um, now I want to speak to the Spanish. Kerry, can you help me to translate, please? Um, los pasos que siguen sobre mi caso son um, tratar de reabrir mi caso de asilo y tratar de uh, para parar mi deportación. So the steps that I still have are trying to reopen my asylum case and trying to stop the deportation order. Uh, pues ahora, gracias a Dios, tengo una visa preaprobada. And now, um, thanks to God, I have a, a visa that's pre-approved. Y pues este, la lista de espera para obtener esta visa son dos años. And the waiting list to have that visa is two years. Y pues, primero Dios, um, después de un tiempo podré, si Dios quiere, tal vez pueda obtener mi, arreglar mi situación migratoria. So hopefully after a period of time I'll be able to um, fix my immigration status. Y siempre voy a estar agradecida con Dios por todo el apoyo que tuve de toda la comunidad. I'm always going to be grateful to God for all of the support I've had from the community. Vivir en Santuario fue muy difícil para mí porque um, fue algo muy estresante y muy frustrante. Living in Sanctuary was really difficult for me because it was very frustrating and very stressful. Siempre pensando en que ¿Qué tenía planeado la um, migración para atacarme, para intimidarme? Always thinking about what immigration was planning to attack me or to intimidate me. Porque cuando recibí la multa de casi medio millón de dólares, muy, muy frustrante para mi familia y muy difícil para mí vivir día a día de pensar qué voy a hacer para pagar esa cantidad, que ellos sabían que yo no tenía esa cantidad de dinero. When I received the fine for almost half a million dollars, it was very frustrating and scary for, for me and my family to, to think, um, how am I going to pay this fine? They know I don't have the money to pay this fine. Fue algo muy difícil para mis hijos, para mi familia. It was very difficult for my kids and for my family. Y pues le agradezco mucho a Dios y a la comunidad que por fin puedo tener mi libertad y estar en casa aquí en Columbus, Ohio con mi familia. And I give thanks to God that finally I could have my freedom and I can be home with my family here in Columbus, Ohio. Y pues seguiré luchando por, por, mi, por arreglar mi situación. I'm going to continue fighting to um, be able to fix my immigration status. Thank, thank you, Edith. Uh, Carrie, uh, it, I know you, you were just sort of signed up to be interpreter, but I, I believe you, you've worked a lot with the, the support committee and other folks or friends of, of Edith. How has this struggle been with you? How, how, where are you at with that? What, where is it, where is it with you emotionally, physically, spiritually? Yeah, so I um, got involved on um, Edith's team, um, I think about five months after she entered Sanctuary and, and have been involved since then. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, there were a lot of challenges and um, it was hard to see Edith stuck in Sanctuary for, for so many 
um, days and years. Um, but I've learned um, so much from her and her strength and her commitment to fight for a family. Um, and I've learned so much from the team in general that, um, you know, none of us were, were experts and knew what would end up working um, for Edith to be able to get out. Um, but we worked and um, followed Edith's leadership. And um, so I'm grateful for, for being able to learn so much. Um, and I'm so grateful to be able to see Edith um, out of sanctuary now. Um, and yeah, I think- um, It's fun seeing her in a speeding car. Maybe not too speeding. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, thank you. Um, Carrie, thanks for your service tonight and, and for your solidarity work with, with uh, Edith all along. Edith, would you like to say any more as closing or is anyone, um, I know we're at uh, 40 till, Ch uh, Tim, before that, Tim, uh, Chavez, do we have the person that you said was going to be on on or no? I can't see. No, we don't. Uh, I, okay. I, I haven't seen her on them. Okay. All right. So I just wanted to make sure we're in good shape. All right. So, um, Edith, how how would you like to close this up tonight? I, I saw Joel posted a GoFundMe uh, uh, post in the chat. I know there's still some limitations on your ability to work. I know there's some uh, ability, uh, uh, some other struggles that um, any person in a working class situation has to deal with. You know, every every day you have to, you have in and out go, you know, income and out go. And, and that, that reality is, is true. Uh, so how would, how, how are you? <laughs> how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Almost I'm feel, I'm feel really happy now. I have my freedom to live it, um, in my house. We are moving for the old apartment we have for a new one to start a new life. To start, I feel like I'm starting again to do my life back. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I want to say to the community, so just please keep uh, support me because I have my next appointment with the eyes uh, in June 15, I think. And I want to the community support me because I don't want them to arrest me and deport me. I know my, you know, because everything can happen with the ICE officers. And sometimes I feel scared that to go in, but um, I do whatever I can do for my family, to keep my family together. Because if I live in Central 40 months, I can keep fighting and I feel a strong because I have all the time the community to support me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all the support. Every people support my family. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And God bless you. No, thank you for uh, being the strong person that you are and, and being able to uh, show us what faith, hope, and family are all about. And it's so important. So thank you. Um, Tim, you did want to talk a little bit about the, the struggle with the, um, the, the Butler County issue. Do, do, do you have enough information to share on that or should we just move on? I don't know if anyone else has information on that. The, a Guatemalan woman. Uh, yeah, I have Tim, information, Mike. Okay, why don't you, Tim, share a little bit more on that because I know that's a, a growing interest I didn't see Lynn on either, so I don't know if she's on or not. Well, I don't know if everybody knows, but I was with uh, Team Miriam, uh, where yeah. she was almost three years in uh, sanctuary at the uh, First English Lutheran Church. She uh, also was released. Uh, let's see, I forget her status. It's um, some some type of a supervision awaiting, uh, you know, her court hearings. And uh, what was great about it is that, uh, you know, I was in it from the very beginning. I was invited by Ruben to uh, Castilla Herrera uh, to assist with Edith, uh, but also uh, uh, he told me well, there's a second woman that's going into sanctuary and I helped uh, with uh, um, um, Mir Miriam, Miriam uh, Vargas. And she, um, uh, I helped him move out of the apartment into the church. And I, the best part was, is helping her move out of the church to an apartment. 
And uh, the victory was ecstatic. And it came from nowhere. And I'm sure Edith also feels the same because, uh, and the other organizers with uh, that were working with Edith. And, uh, you know, it looked like nothing was just going to happen. All What we were really doing was uh, just keeping uh, Miriam uh, comfortable and, uh, you know, helping with her children, helping with her husband and, you know, uh, making sure she, uh, you know, uh, that she was comfortable, basically. And how comfortable can you be in sanctuary? You know, it's basically about like being in prison. So that uh, was great. I mean, so I was looking at Miriam's um, uh, Facebook page. And I saw that uh, there was uh, uh, Miriam had posted uh, something about a, a woman from Guatemala. Her name is Sarah. Uh, Sarah Mendes Morales, and uh, the story is, I well, what happened is that uh, I made contact with her group, and uh, Sarah Liebler was an organizer and advocate with the Ohio Immigrant Visitation, and she, uh, we discussed uh, uh, the specific case that they're working on. The Ohio Immigrant Visitation really helps people that are being deported and people that are in jail uh, that are, are undocumented. And, uh, you know, they give them, um, uh, they help them in the commissary while they're in jail, but they also help them with um, goods when, they, when they're when they leaving and they throw money into the commissary so that, because they can't give them money, but they can throw money into the commissary so that when they get deported and they have at least some, uh, some money to, you know, take a bus or, you know, whatever they can when they get to the country that they're deported to. But they're taking on the specific case um, uh, with um, uh, Sarah Mendes Morales, and uh, she's a woman that's 34 years old. She's a cancer survivor, and uh, which is hard to deal with to start with, and a mother of two children who are American children. They're, I mean, they're they're uh, they're they're American uh, citizens, and she reported a sexual abuse of a partner of hers, of uh, her oldest daughter, and um, and what happened is the perp uh, the perpetrator uh, escaped so the they turned the guns on her and uh, what happened is that she had to uh, she was uh, poorly represented she uh, she pled uh, guilty to um, uh, you know some type of endangered child endangerment she spent her time in, in jail and then she went before an immigration judge and the immigration judge says there's no way we can deport you back to Guatemala that's where you this guy was that you uh, that you reported for sexual abuse so he ordered her released and it's being appealed right now by ice and she's still in butler county jails so i'm going to throw uh and i also you can uh, look on um the wgrn facebook page and i have the interview with uh, sarah in there and you could uh, get a, a better history from that and i put it on the radio also but uh it uh if you want to uh, hear the interview, you could uh, catch it on WGRN Facebook page. So um, are you trying to show some continuity between one free press salon and the next? We talked about GRN last week and now, and that's good. That's continuity that yes, GRN is a resource for the community. Oh, definitely a resource for the community. And it's uh, probably the best radio that's here in Columbus, yep. uh, in my opinion. So uh i will post on the chat um um uh sarah mendes morales uh, her facebook page uh i'll uh, send some information on the ohio Immig immigrant uh, visitation.org and i invite everybody to look into it we really need letters to be written to portman we need letters written to um um uh, sherrod brown um uh in order to get her released because she has a sponsor now as a matter of fact sarah liebler who i interviewed she is her sponsor you know and uh it'd just be really great to get her out of butler county uh jail she's uh in remission from cancer you know COVID is rampant in that prison it's run by the arpaio of ohio uh richard jones you know, which there's a story in there too. I, you know, Richard Jones, I found out about from Ruben. He told me one time he was had a meeting with some undocumented people in uh, Butler County, and Jones, the sheriff Jones, just walked into the meeting, and Ruben had to ask him to leave that it was a private meeting. So, um, you know, um, the so 
that's that's the situation that she's in. Uh, she's separated from her children. They're in foster care. Uh, they're uh, basically trying to take them away from her, you know, to be adopted by other people. And uh, we should just get her out and get her children back and get her on a pathway to citizenship. So I invite you all to maybe a sister would just assist us with letters because she needs them and uh, she needs support. I mean, she's been alone all this time. And uh, just take a look at uh, what I post on the chat and uh, we invite you to participate be active in this. So Thank that's you, about Ken. all I got to say. And maybe we'll have uh, Sarah uh, Liebler to be a guest at another salon sometimes. I think we got mixed up on our time, I think, here. That's fine. That's fine. That, thank you. So Marty, uh, sort of a good segue because Tim is definitely deep into the ConFest and program uh, solar, all that stuff over the years. And you're wanting to bring in an opportunity for some folks and possibly what we could do is is uh, one thing that I saw Tom, uh, I believe Tom uh, Sutter's uh, posted um, something about that uh, Baltimore Velasquez has called for a statewide immigration uh, movement and so a justice rights movement. And so um, that renewed call may be a workshop. And so Marty's come to us to sort of talk about Confess this, this year is gonna be um, virtual again, um, opens up a whole lot of different opportunities. And so Marty is going to uh, share us with uh, one aspect or maybe a multiple of aspects that may happen. Go ahead, thanks Marty. Thank you, Mark. Um, you know, sitting, sitting here tonight and listening to everyone so far is kind of like uh, sitting at a series of ComFest workshops. It's great, great stuff. and. Um, that's why I love it when Suzanne wants us to be a part of this because it's a, it's a great conversation. I, I learn a lot just sitting here for the last 45 minutes. Um, I think Tim is, is on the call and, and he knows all this, I, I'm sure. I think Lynn's also on the call yes, she uh, tonight. And so she can add anything. Her specialty obviously is, is, is the merchandise and everything. Um, which is so important for ComFest because we can raise a little bit of money that way. But ComFest again this year is going to be virtual, unfortunately, but fortunately too, because there's a lot of great people who work at GPC and who work on ComFest Spirit and Purpose Committee who are very, very good and getting better at putting on a virtual ComFest. And so this year, all three days, June 25, 26, and 27 are going to feature uh, live performances Again, like last year, entertainment um, and uh, workshops. And I'm here to, to uh, pitch a little bit everyone to think about submitting workshops that can be um, played and presented over the weekend. And some of you, some a lot of folks have probably gotten word from either Candy or Julie Kurtzenberger who are working on virtual ComFest. Um, if you had participated before or if you had been accepted for last year's ComFest, which obviously we had to go to uh, virtual kind of the last minute, you may have received some information uh, from Candy or Julie asking that you consider submitting workshop videos for this year. And they can be short. They can be 30 seconds or they can be up to 55 minutes. So there's a lot of room in there for folks who have something to say in the spirit of ComFest, uh, that's in line with ComFest principles. And uh, you may want to have a video about your organization. Some of the stuff we heard tonight would be perfect for ComFest workshops. So um, uh, I'm here really to remind folks that that is welcome and encouraged this year. And we hope that we can fill up the weekend, not just with music and entertainment, which is great for ComFest, but also we want to make sure that the activism and the progressive politics that are so important in our community are well represented throughout the weekend of uh, June 25 through 27 this year. Um, if anyone is, I have, a, I have, we're already hard at work putting together a ComFest program and a schedule. Uh, the logo has been selected. Actually, two logos have been selected for ComFest this year. I know this is just paper on a camera. But there has been a lot of work already, um, as Tim and Lynn can 
can uh, let you know as well behind the scenes to make sure that this year, even though we can't be in the park, it's still going to be a, uh, a hopeful and um, very, very important virtual confest this year. So to um, just go to confess uh, website and start that process? Or? Yeah, there is some information on the confess website. Actually, they can be submitted to videos at confess.com. Okay. Um, there is, a, there is an email uh, that has been set up specially for this. So if you do have content, you want to create some new content, they can be submitted again, videos at confest.com. Any uh, parameters that are concerning, you know, that kind of thing? You know, no nudity, no... no <laughs> PP13, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, Folks on, on this call and people who would be um, interested in submitting information, they know what, what works at a, at a workshop for ComFest. Yeah, it's PG, you know, family oriented, but obviously geared toward the audience that uh, ComFest uh, or Spirit of Purpose is geared toward and, and ComFest values, uh, progressive activism in our community. So no nudity, I guess you're right about that. <laughs> Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep up with the tradition, you know. Um, well, thank you. Any any other questions? I see uh, Lynn posted videos at confess.com. Yes, that's the other. Thank you, Lynn. That's great. Yeah. And I do encourage people in organizations and individuals because this is also a chance for Confess to have some videos online about your organizations, perhaps especially if you had received funds from Confess for your organization for a project, you can summarize it, you can give an update on it, and those can run during the weekend, but also they can run other times. And the other thing about, um, so we really encourage people, whether it's a personal one, a story you wanna share, the five minutes you always wanted to be the MC in, say, um, those types of things. Anything is, who knows how they'll be used. Maybe it'll just be used on social media. Maybe it will be used part of that weekend. Maybe it'll be also used on the website. And that's the beauty of it. But here's your chance to tell it. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. MJ so, said she submitted something through the website. Uh, how will people know that they've been accepted to be uh, of a video uh, portion? So MJ just said she submitted something through the website. It, um... Well, there is a production crew who is discussing which ones will be live. Okay. Which one, which will be. Oops, you froze up, Lynn. They're processing it as much as, you know, as fast as they can too. And yeah. um, as we know, it is, haven't done this before this way. So there's a lot of different challenges. But there are going to be some things that will be recorded live at some of the, a couple locations around town. Um, and basically from noon two to seven is pretty much the Confess package of hours that you can of course watch any of it any time. But if there's going to be live, any, excuse me, coordinated programming from, a, from beginning to end, it's going to be two to seven each day. And, um, we just it'll be kind of fun and find your own watch party and take over your local brewery with the big screens and that, that, <laughs> that's probably the, the best way to to know when and where your video is going to show up is to spend the weekend watching virtual confest um we are going to produce a virtual confest program again this year and hopefully that information will be compiled and put together in a, as much as in advance as we possibly can before the 20, 25th. But uh, as soon as that's available, that'll be posted on the website as well. Fantastic. Thank and make it easy for people to tag you individually so our AI of the world can really um, be used to all of our best purposes. So um, if, and if you don't have it in the video, please include it in, in the text because you know, we have people, it, we have a great little crew, but they need the content to work with. And whether it's been a workshop that you've done in the past and it's been nicely edited down and then it can be even linked up onto the Confess website against you, with your name, your organization. Remember, it's all 360. It all can go in three different ways. So um, 
if you have any questions, reach out to one of us. Okay. Brian's asking, are there going to be MCs this year? And what, what's that role? Uh, some kind of MC for the workshops and stuff? What, what's going on with there? Well, actually, that stuff is being pre-recorded um, because you can't really do it live. It's because it is um, basically, it's a television show from two to seven. And <laughs> I'm sorry, so go ahead. That type of stuff is being done now. And then we'll be, um, continue to be, there's some that has already been discussed and what's why it's the what the MCs are saying, but as new stuff keeps happening, there will be other things. And again, even if it's not part of that two to seven, other than go check out and hear about types of things in general, it will have a place in the Confest virtual. And again, part of that other parts of it to be able to be archival, but also add more dimensions to the Confest website when you are talked about and link to your sites. Marty. But if you've always wanted to be an MC, or if you've always wanted 30 seconds or 60 seconds up on stage, record it, send it in. And... <laughs> All right. I hope <laughs> some of, you guys. one of them has to go viral, right? Somebody can do it and one of one 30 second will hit the TikToks and go viral. Hey. E Edith, Edith has already gone viral. It, uh, have you seen that video that has gone? I mean, it's gone global. She's global. So there you go. That that one, she's already global. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, we're approaching the hour. Um, oh, we sure are. I think we have approached everything we are going to do today. I want to share my screen one more time. If anybody has anything that they want to throw in there, um, please do uh, through the chat. Um, let's see the current slide. So when we start talking about uh, we're part of some kind of revolution or something, you know, that workers' rights and stuff, there'll be a time when we're not in opposition and we'll be uh, running things, right? There'll be things that we have to do. So uh, there's some tasks that may have to come about. These are just a list of seven that someone put together I thought was interesting. But, you know, we're constantly building for that next change, that next reality that's out there, that next social justice plateau you know, never, never thinking that women would have gotten a vote, you know, 200 years ago, never thinking uh, slavery would end uh, 500 years ago. Um, you know, the social movement is such that we're going to attain something soon. Maybe not soon in our life, but soon in global life, right? It may be now that we're, that this process we're going through, but those are just some ideas that are out there. You know, we have to restructure how we do things. Um, we're going to have to defend against some counter counteractivities, right? Uh, people that want to be in power want to be in power. I mean, they're going to be in power. They're going to try to stay in power. So we're going to have to constantly be about uh, trying to protect what we win. Um, I don't know if I'm still sharing, no, I'm not, okay. So one last announcement I wanted to do, let me see, is anybody saying that? Can you share that again, Mark? Is that a PDF you can share? Uh, yes, I can share that and um, I'll send that to you, Lynn, I will. And uh, I'll show it again, yes. That was a quick, I, it's just a, an example. The problem is I can't get once I get it in here, I can't figure out how to move on to the next thing. <laughs> oh, maybe there it is. Excellent. Okay. So there, there's some lists. Um, we can go through them. Squelch any counteractivity. Um, expropriate the expropriators. So we're, we've already started talking about um, climate issues last month and that we need to really start talking about the expropriation uh, industry uh, needs to be talked about uh, and stopped. Uh, nationalize many things possibly. I mean, uh, why are people, private people making money off social goods, 
So those are some, some issues that you may think about. Um, and then the final one is, you know, have a nice life, you know, the, <laughs> all, all that we, we're fighting for is to be about creating a good life for each other, right? We're, we're trying to create a good life. Um, this is just something that I found on the, on the, on the, uh, the uh, computer and I wanted to share that those are, you know, we need to start thinking a little beyond uh, always being in opposition, always being the one that people think they can defeat. Uh, here's another position that is out there. Uh, let me share this one real quick. This is another, something I've put out there about two, three years or two, three months ago Oops, sorry, there we go. Is that I wanted to create a, um, a movement for some kind of platform, people's platform. And these are some issues that I thought would be valuable to uh, fight or to discuss or to be in debate with each other within the free press community, uh, progressive community, left community of Columbus, Central Ohio. Um, I like what Anak says right now, Anak Bayan says not Columbus. So I'm starting to put that in front of everything I'm sending out as that I'm not, I'm, I'm, my address is this, that, you know, 1101 Bryden Road, not Columbus, 43205. And I, <laughs> These, these are some other things. You know, what are our shared values? What, I mean, we need to start talking about how do we put a city budget together that uh, represents us? You know, climate stuff. Kathy is on tonight and has pushed greatly for uh, uh, ready for 100% uh, renewables, got the aggregation passed. I mean, her work is uh, amazing and, and continues hopefully uh, on and on and on. Uh, but we need to build that structure. Community safety, we know we're in the light of, and right of that. Public education, another um, reality that uh, we've been 40 years, 40 years out of constitutional uh, balance for public funding in the, in the state of Ohio, 40, 40 years. Just think about that, okay. Um, and then you start talking about why is public education no good? It's, I mean, we're not funding it constitutionally. Um, equitable and welcoming city. You know, how do we, how do we welcome the one more million um, uh, immigrants that are coming into, into Columbus, Ohio, Central Ohio? We're, hopefully in the next 20, 30 years, we're gonna have another million immigrants, another million folks coming in to this city and we'll be able to deal with that. Fighting for basic needs, that's a constant. And housing. Uh, just came to an end, what, the, the, um, the, uh, the ability to stop um, uh, evictions just came to an end this week. And we don't know where that's gonna end up, right? We're not gonna end up, we're, we're hopefully. And then the last is, um, I should look at escape, there we go. And then one last one I wanted to share. I don't know if I'm sharing still. No, I'm not. Is this one. There's a big rally coming up next week. And I'm hoping that folks will feel like they're called to be there. Because it is a very, very important. Oops, wait a back. What just happened? Slow, 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 slow. Sorry. Hmm. Sorry about this. Let me just push it up here. Come on. I don't know if I can open up when I'll get them shared or not. There it is.
there's an action next week. I uh, hope everybody can come on. Bicentennial Park, side of mile. Uh, this is going and growing in support. The, these, the uh, Columbus Museum for Art has joined, um, just to name one. Uh, there's many, many folks that are starting to come out. The 1.30 at May 16th down at Bicentennial Park, please come out. It's uh, our effort to stand strong against hate and to uh, really be about uh, ending racism in Central Ohio. Uh, on all fronts. So uh, that's just something coming up uh, next uh, Sunday. So come on out. Anybody have any last words of, of encouragement? Public education funding, 1997 was the Supreme Court found. Yep, modal, yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, Brett, oh yes, thank you, Doug. Doug and uh, is reminding us the announcement that the Nehemiah action tomorrow uh, for bread. If you haven't signed up yet, um, you can go on bread uh, or uh, email me or other folks. I have a link for folks to get on. I don't know. I'll try to send that. Did somebody send that? There you go. Uh, thank you. Kathy just sent the uh, Facebook announcement about the uh, action on, on uh, anti-hate. If someone could send the thing about Nehemiah, I, I can't find that real quick. Um, the name of my action is tomorrow, oh, no, not tomorrow, Monday, Monday, but it's virtual. So if you sign up or if you go. No, 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 Tuesday. Tuesday, May 11th? May 11th is Tuesday. Oh, my bad, May 11th, Tuesday, I'm off. I, I was looking at a 2020 20 whatever. There's a, there's a drive-in too. I, I forget, the church is on Refugee Road. Yeah, First Church of God, First Church of God, May 11th, Tuesday. I believe six, 6.30, what is that? 6.45. Okay, thank you. I, I don't have the information. And the link is there. Uh, thank you. Just www.breadcolumbus.com. Thank you very much, thank you, yeah. And then uh, Sandy uh, Bolzness is, is uh, talking about um, the Cosseth Garden. I, I have, um, I, I can say about that. Um, yeah, please. Yeah, so um, the, Move to Men's Democracy, um, speaking of democracy program that we have, the local Central Ohio affiliate has every month, and some of you on this program have been on it, either as speakers or as guests, which is great to see. But um, our next one is going to be on Closer Garden, and, um, and I asked Michael Duty to do this because I kept reading lots of things and hearing lots of things, and I didn't hear his voice or the people from the close up garden. So I really think this is an important one. Um, and, but I put down there where you, how you can sign up for it. But my recommendation is <laughs> um, if you're not signed up with Move to Men at this point, you can see, I also put the link in there to sign up for it because it helps us let people, let our representatives know how many more of us want them to pass this We the People Amendment. And, um, and then you get, the um, the monthly notices the notices about these monthly um, events these uh, speaking of democracies which are pretty much located here in town so of interest to most people here I would think everybody <laughs> so oh and so, then one last thing um, I'm setting up an appointment to meet with Joyce Beatty soon there's really only supposed to be five of us on the call but I'm I'm looking I'm, I'm, if you're in if you're in Joyce Beatty's area we're going to be asking her to support the we the p the we the people amendment but if you're in her if you're in her area and you want to contact me i'll put my phone number and email address down here in a minute um if you're interested we i'd like to have kind of a variety younger people middle age people different everything different backgrounds whatever um so if you're interested in being part of that and you want to say something to her, i don't know if she'll be on the call i'm hoping she is um but so it might be an aid any questions let me know Thanks, Andy. Thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, the, and your movement, your move to, I mean, the, the uh, constitutional amendment is moving forward in a lot of ways uh, that some folks never even thought may have. So it's, it's moving forward with the uh, changing, uh, eliminating the, the personhood of, of corporations is, is in a quick what it is. Uh, but it's about we the people. 
we the people and and really focusing on what the constitution really was focused on was uh that demos the people power was what was supposed to drive this nation and not corpo <laughs> but anyways uh pat marita uh you have uh some information about hp6 uh the remnants of that i don't know if you want to speak about that but she posted that as in the chat mm -hmm. as well you you available to speak about that for about two two seconds two minutes yeah, yeah. can you hear me you're like in a cannon <laughs> oh yeah i don't have a rug in this room <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you all may know that the legislature passed a bill that repealed the nuclear part of the bailout of victory, uh, victory, victory. Well, it was a sort of a victory uh, because, of course, we wanted that. That was the worst thing of all. But already because the FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, had made a decision that uh, if any utility got a, a statewide bailout subsidy, uh, then they would have to charge more for their for their electricity. So it would have ended up that that uh, First Energy would not have been competitive in selling their electricity. So they wanted uh, to get out of the bailout, and of course they've got out of the bailout. But they have not. They suddenly they don't need all that money in order to keep the sale. Yeah. They're going to keep them open. So, but now there is a there is another bill. And the Senate is hearing it, one of the Senate committees, uh, uh, Ener Energy and Public Utilities, is hearing it next Wednesday. Uh, and that would repeal the coal part of the, of the HB6 bailout. So uh, if you click on that link, it goes to an add up, a Sierra Club add up campaign. You can sign your name and it send, will send a message to your Ohio senator saying, let's bail out, let, let's stop. The coal bailout because we certainly don't need any more global warming uh, coal plants to be subsidized. <clears throat> yes, that's right. And, and keep it in the ground. Keep it in the ground. Um, Bob, I said thank you, Pat. Bob, I see your hand up, and this is our com commensurate uh, calendar keeper, taker, and and forever holder uh, for the co uh, community. Uh, uh, Columbus Free Press, and please uh, give us our assignments. <laughs> Actually, one thing, I want to be able to find information about that event at Bicentennial Park that you described to me earlier. Doing Google searches often doesn't work. So if there's a link or a Facebook event, it'd be great. That's not why I put on for the announcement, however. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, um, the Facebook was put up by somebody, uh, somebody put it up there recently. Steve. Which sponsoring group would it be? It's hard to find Facebook events without- Kathy put it, it up there. Yeah. Which one? Uh, sponsoring orgs, uh, it, there's a, a variety of them, but I, I, let me get to you on offline on that. Offline, yeah. yeah. But, but the, the reason I'm making an announcement is- <clears throat> Yeah, please. I'm, I'm active, at least somewhat, with Americans United for Separation of Church and State. And they're currently doing a lobbying effort in support of the Do No Harm Act, which is federal, it would return the Religious Freedom Restoration Act to its original intent, which allows minority religions to practice as they're led. Um, for example, Native American smoking peyote and things like that. And it's been distorted by the religious right to allow religious right people to discriminate against other people. It's just a complete distortion of what it originally meant. And Americans United for Separation of Church and the State wants lobby visits. And I live in Central Ohio. I'm in Steve Stiver's district, except he's about to retire. Um, I know people in Beatty's and um, someone in Balderson's office. If anyone's interested in being part of a lobbying team, I would be interested to do that. I don't want to just walk in by myself and be the lobbyist by my, on my own. Yeah, I, I don't know if, I think I might live in Stivers. Uh, I live in an area that has all, no, I'm not Boulder Dash. Um, where, where do you live? Just short of Fifth. So I think it's Stivers <laughs> slash uh, Beatty. 
Damn. Where I vote, where I vote. Now that I'm getting into a little electoral issue now, so I need to shut up right now and not talk. 